Welcome to the episode. Today we're diving into the troubling world of synthetic cathinones, specifically 3CMC and 4CMC. These compounds, you know, are stirring up quite a storm in public health circles. Yeah, it's really uh, intense. We're talking about clofedrone and clefedrone, right? They're making waves on the recreational market, causing serious harm. Exactly. Um, these substances, part of the synthetic cathinone family, are the second most frequently abused new psychoactive substances worldwide. They're chemically mm. modeled after cathinone, which comes from the cat plant, but the synthetic versions are like way more potent and dangerous. Right, and they're not just stronger. They also have a rapid onset and short-lived effects. This forces users into a cycle of repeated dosing, increasing the odds of overdose. Yeah, yeah, and that's the real kicker. They act as psychostimulants by boosting the concentration of neurotransmitters like dopamine, noradrenaline, and serotonin. Yeah. In simple terms, they crank your brain's reward system way up, but with a dangerous aftertaste. So then the user gets that quick hit of euphoria, yet it quickly wears off, pushing them to redose. It's like... um chasing a moving target, isn't it? Absolutely. And the immediate effects aren't just about euphoria. Users might face psychomotor agitation, balance issues, even hallucinations. Plus, the cardiovascular side effects, tachycardia, high blood pressure, chest pain, and in worst-case scenarios, cardiac arrest, make this a full-blown public health concern. I mean, think about it. These substances, by interfering with brain chemistry, also lead to severe neurological consequences. Hallucinations, seizures, and even reduced consciousness. It's pretty alarming. Right. There's even lab research showing significant neurotoxicity. For instance, a 2020 study on SHSY5Y neuroblastoma cells showed that prolonged exposure to both 3CMC and 4CMC led to considerable cell damage. It's like the compounds are insidiously eroding nerve cells over time. That study was eye-opening, especially since the cytotoxicity seemed to intensify with prolonged exposure. But um, I wonder, don't you think the emphasis on prolonged exposure might underplay acute risks? That's a fair point. While the study highlights long-term damage, we can't ignore the immediate risks, like hyperthermia. These substances can ramp body temperature dangerously, sometimes above 44 degrees. This extreme yeah. temperature spike can wreak havoc, especially for the brain. And there's the issue of cardiovascular and neurological impacts. Excessive sweating, jaw clenching, impaired coordination, and even memory issues are just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Plus, when you add in the fact that 4CMC has MDMA-like effects, with one study indicating it's 10 times more potent at causing MDMA-like stimulus effects than cocaine or methamphetamine, the picture gets mm. even more complex. It really blurs the lines between different types of stimulant harm. Right. And mixing these with other central nervous system stimulants, like cocaine or amphetamines, creates a cocktail of risks. The synergistic effects could easily tip someone into acute toxicity mode. No doubt. And um, speaking of dangerous combinations, there's also an increase in mortality rates linked to these substances. For example, by mid-2021 in the EU, there were several deaths associated with 3CMC. And Poland's numbers for clefedrone-related deaths jumped from 4 to 10 in just one year. That jump is stark, and it underscores the growing threat these substances pose globally. It's not just about regular health issues. We're seeing genuine fatal outcomes. Yeah, and beyond the immediate damage, there's the long-term fallout. Repeated use can lead to depressive syndromes, psychotic episodes, and cognitive disorders that even mimic symptoms of conditions like Parkinson's disease. Yeah. It's a pretty grim picture for chronic users. I mean, who would have thought that something engineered in a lab could wreak so much havoc on brain function? It really challenges our typical assumptions about drug safety. Absolutely. And don't forget the metabolic studies that revealed some unexpected metabolic pathways. One study, for example, examined the metabolic profiles of 3CMC and 4CMC and even discovered pathways that hadn't been reported before for any methcathinone analogs. Mm. This kind of research is essential for better detection methods in clinical and forensic settings. Yeah, the more we understand these metabolic processes, the better we can design tests and interventions. It's a crucial layer of research for safeguarding public health. And from a regulatory perspective, many countries, like Poland, have already classified these substances 
as psychotropic. This means unauthorized production, possession, or distribution is not just frowned upon. It's illegal and punishable by law. Yeah. Given the risks, it makes perfect sense. True, but it also poses challenges. There's evidence that 3CMC can be produced on an industrial scale using a two-step process involving alpha bromination and then reacting with an amine. With reports of illicit labs in Europe and many consignments coming from India, effective enforcement becomes a real headache. Right. Enforcement is complicated by the ease of synthesis. The industrial scale production really complicates things. It's like trying to stop a river with a broom mm. in a way. And this global production chain only serves to widen the reach of these dangerous compounds. There's also a concern about driving and operating machinery while under the influence of these drugs. Even if detailed studies haven't been conducted yet, the effects on coordination and reduced consciousness suggest a significant risk on the roads and in workplaces. Absolutely, it's a ticking time bomb. Even if we're still piecing together full behavioral profiles, the potential for impaired motor coordination and concentration is too high to ignore. It's a public safety challenge on multiple yeah. fronts. Now, you mentioned earlier that 4CMC has a particularly strong MDMA-like effect. Isn't it a bit risky to assume that having similar effects to MDMA translates directly into similar harm profiles? I mean, MDMA itself, while dangerous, has a very different cultural footprint. That's a great point. I mean, it's like um, drawing a parallel between two very different beasts. While 4CMC's MDMA-like effects highlight its potency in a certain stimulus aspect, the overall harm, including cardiovascular and neurological toxicity, goes beyond just recreating an MDMA experience. So, even though the comparison provides a reference, the risk profile is much broader and more severe. Exactly. The comparison helps in understanding potency, but doesn't fully capture the cascade of toxic effects. And speaking of cascades, the long-term cognitive damage, memory impairment, concentration issues, problem-solving disruptions, are like slow poison to neurological function. Indeed. And what's particularly insidious is that some effects, like oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction, accumulate over time. These are not just momentary issues. They could lead to permanent brain function disorders. It's a yeah. multi-layered attack on overall neurological health. One of the studies looked at 12 metabolites for 3CMC and 10 for 4CMC. That kind of diversity in metabolic reaction pathways, including keto reduction and endomethylation, really underlines the complexity of these compounds. Right, and it's like um, peeling an onion. Each layer of metabolism reveals more about how these drugs interact with our body mm. on a cellular level. These findings can guide both therapeutic detection and forensic investigations. And yet, even as we gain insights, the challenge remains of keeping pace with the evolution of these substances. You know, chemistry evolves, regulations try to catch up, but sometimes the gap is just too wide. Exactly. It's a persistent cat and mouse game. The scientific community and regulatory bodies have to be agile in responding to these rapidly changing compounds. Yeah. It's a balance between advancing research and enforcing laws to protect public health. I find it fascinating and disturbing how these synthetic cathinones blur the boundaries between legal highs and dangerous substances. The sheer range of adverse effects makes it clear that we should be extremely cautious with them. Yeah, and it emphasizes the absolute importance of public awareness. If someone suspects adverse reactions, particularly with symptoms like chest pain, severe agitation or impaired motor skills, getting immediate medical help is crucial. Mm. No one should take these risks lightly. Agreed. And while the research continues to uncover more about the long-term impacts, our conversation today really highlights both the acute and chronic dangers of 3CMC and 4CMC. Absolutely. It's a wake-up call. The more we delve into the science, the more we see that these are not just fleeting recreational risks. They're deeply damaging substances with potentially yeah. irreversible effects on health. It reinforces why prevention and education are paramount. Well said. With global production on the rise and enforcement challenges, it's clear that this issue is far from contained. The scientific, legal, and public health communities all have a part to play here.
Indeed, thanks for the engaging dialogue today. We've unpacked a lot, from rapid neurological and cardiovascular effects to the alarming long-term risks and even implications for public safety on the roads. I hope our discussion today helps mm. listeners appreciate the serious risks these substances present. Absolutely. It's been a deep dive, and it's a conversation that we really need to keep having. Stay safe, everyone. And if you or someone you know might be at risk, please seek help immediately.